Hey guys, welcome back to Don't Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 73. guys welcome back um it's been a, a two weeks i think <laughs> since i filmed um because last weekend uh friday through monday we went on a little vacation um so i didn't film while i was on vacation obviously <laughs> and i did intend to film right after we came back but um as usual life just happened where we were just really busy uh recovering from vacation and uh dealing with a lot of stuff and it rained so much here that there never was any good lighting or anything but Today it's finally not rainy, so I thought I would try to film today. And uh, Jesse just got picked up, and Devin just left, so <laughs> we uh, I got a good timing to film. So I do have some stuff to share with you guys. I got some finished objects, some whips, some acquisitions, and uh, some sewing stuff, and just all kinds of stuff to talk about. I don't know how long this video will be. I'm gonna try not to make it too long, but I'm gonna try not to rush it either, because sometimes I have a bad habit of rushing my videos. But um. Let's see here, I have four finished objects this week. Two of them I don't have with me. They're just little tiny things. I will add in a picture of um, them, but they're not mine. It's the picture off the pattern. Because I didn't even take pictures of the ones that I made. Maybe I did. Actually, I think I did. I'll, I'll put a picture in. <laughs> but um, they're cord tamers. I'll go ahead and just hop in with that. It's a cord tamer, which is a thing like, like if you have a phone charger, you wrap it around it and button it so that the phone charger doesn't unravel in like a bag or whatever. My sister asked me to make two of them for her net or for her son, <laughs> my nephew, um, for like his um, DS charger or something. I don't know. But uh, so I made them in a bright yellow. I think it's actually called bright yellow. <laughs> uh, the Red Heart Super Saver bright yellow. And uh, the ones when I finished them, they were all crocheted and the ends were woven in, but I didn't put buttons on them. She's going to put buttons on them. I think she wanted. Um, I think she has Batman buttons to put on because she, I remember her asking for them to be like a Batman yellow. So, uh, that's what I did. <laughs> but I will pop the picture up at some point. And it is a free pattern, but I can't find the website that it was from. But you can find the pattern easily by looking up on Pinterest or even Google, um, crochet cord tamer pattern. And it was put out by Crochet Verse, but it's not on their website anymore. I can't find it on their website to link it. But uh, what I did is when I found it on Pinterest forever ago, I just downloaded the picture and kept it in my folder of crochet patterns on my desktop so that, you know, I could always find it. But it is a super simple pattern. You could even easily just whip one out without the pattern. Um, or you could even just memorize it, you know. But anyways, it's just super simple free pattern. But yeah, I made two of them. <laughs> two yellow ones. My hair's a little crazy because I washed it last night. So usually after I wash my hair the next day, it's it's kind of crazy because of it getting fluffy. I naturally dry my hair, so it gets weird. <laughs> okay, next finished object is right here. Uh, it is the third square for the Unraveled Mittens scrap blanket square cow going on this year. She's putting out um, 24 squares, I think it will be. Uh, every other Wednesday, she's putting out a new square. I haven't started on the fourth one yet. I got the pattern and all that ready. I just haven't um, actually sat down and work, worked on it. So it came out last Wednesday. So I still have over a week to work, get that one done before the new new one comes out. But this was the third one, which is the boxed block square. And it's all jiggly swapped <laughs> because it's not blocked or anything. But it did come out the right size. It's really bright too. I showed it to go last week, but I only had a few rows in it. I ended up only needing to put one roll of single crochet on this one to make it the right size, which is fine. This one is actually a smidge long this way, a wide. I just got a phone call. <laughs> it interrupted. But I'm not going to worry about it. It's The sizes are just so small, different, that I think it'll be fine once I piece them together with like a border and all that stuff. It won't even be noticeable. And this is just going to be a blanket that's going to be in the living room somewhere. So it doesn't have to look perfect. It's just got to be functional. But yeah, so I made this with Red Heart Super Saver. Uh, hot pink, I think it's called. And uh, bright yellow, I think, are the colors. But it's the neon pink and yellow. Super sunny right now. So it might be blown out a little bit. It probably won't look the way it's actually supposed to look. But yeah, I really enjoyed this pattern. It was super, super simple. I love these patterns so far because they look um, more detailed than they actually are. 
it makes it look like you did a little bit more work than you actually did. But yeah, I could easily see making an entire blanket this pattern or even a garment. Like a summer top that you would wear over a, uh, like a cami or something would be nice. Or a bathing suit cover up or something. I like it, yeah. Let's see here. My first square was green. My second one was orange. This one is pink and yellow. So I think the fourth square, when I do start it, hopefully soon. <laughs> Maybe even today because I'm almost done with the jade one. I'll show you that in a minute. But um, I'm going to make it blue. I think it's Red Heart Takura or something like that. I can't remember now. But it's their tur turquoise color. Ugh. I'm going to make it that color. And my last finished object is, I love this one. I used the same colors from this. I actually, that's one reason I wanted to use these colors is because I love the colors on this one so much. Um, so blowy outy. <laughs> but uh, that I wanted to use it again. And then I did add black and white just because I wanted uh, contrast in the middle part. But this is a pattern. It's a paper pattern, but Nicole sent it to me to um, to make. <laughs> and so I did. And I really loved it. I started this before we went on vacation, and then I finished it um, when we got back. I actually took this with me on our trip, but I never even touched it when I was there. I didn't crochet at all the whole time I was on my trip. But it is the, I think it's Skogan Peak Cow by Nicole at Derob Creations. And I will link her YouTube channel below, but I will also link the uh, pattern for this. And this pattern was so fun to make. When I first got it, when she first sent it to me, I was like, Ugh, I was a little intimidated because I'm not the best at color work. Um, I, you know, intermediate maybe. <laughs> I can do it, I just don't necessarily always enjoy it. And sometimes it's harder, you know, it's hard. It's like any technique, is you're good at some and you're not good at others. But so I was a little intimidated by this just by looking at it. But once I actually started it, the pattern sequences <clears throat> for the whole thing are pretty much the same. They're just like one little thing is different each round. So it makes it super easy to memorize. And you know, like you, you do the stitches and then you repeat that all the way around. So it's kind of like the Mandala Madness, which is behind me. It looks intimidating, but it's the same pattern. Each row is the same pattern, just repeated eight times. So it's super easy to memorize it. So and this is the exact same thing this cow was. So when I started it, it was easier than I thought and I really enjoyed it and I wanted to just work on it. I wanted to work on it so bad while we were on vacation, but I was so busy doing vacation stuff that uh, I didn't have a moment to really sit down and do anything. So I, the day we came back from our vacation, um, I started working on it again and I think I finished it the next morning because I wanted to get it done. And then I did weave in the ends finally because it was done for a few days before I wove in the ends. But here it is. <clears throat> I absolutely love this pattern. She did such a good job at designing it. And when I seen it, um, every time I do a pattern, that was the air kicking on if you hear it, the heat. Um, I always go to the Ravelry page of the project and then I click on the project so I can see what other people did. Their colors and there were some on there already from other people who made them. And uh, everybody made these lines the same color as these ones. But I wanted it to contrast because I really like the stripes. If you hold it the right way, it's kind of like diagonal stripes. I really like that so I wanted it to pop and I thought that black and yellow would make this look really cool and I think it did. Oh, there's hair all over it. I wore it the other day. Apparently I'm shedding. Oh it's too sunny. It's kind of better. Yeah like over here it looks better on the phone. I don't know if it looks better for y'all. But yeah I like it a lot. It's big. I suck at wearing towels and I've not washed it yet so it's still a little stiff. But yeah I'm definitely going to be wearing it and it's almost spring here. I'm going to say that with like a grain of salt because it has it has snowed here in May before. So I don't want to get too crazy saying that it's spring. But I just love it. I want to make a hat. I kind of I think I'm going to try before next winter to take these patterns and somehow make a hat. Like a slouch. I mean you could almost just shorten this. Shorten the, the um, what am I trying to say? The, the number stitches around and then you could cinch it. <laughs> And make like a slouchy hat, you know, make it longer. I don't know. I just want to be cool. I always like to have a matching hat with my cows or scarves. Because that's just the kind of person I am. But I love it. I even, I've told Nicole like multiple times that I've, I love doing this. I loved it. I love the color it came out. I might even make another one with different colors. <laughs> but I'm a bright person. Um, I'll show you one of my souvenirs that we bought in a minute to prove that point. And Devin said as soon as he walked in the store and seen it, he knew exactly which one I was going to pick out. And I did. I went straight to it and bought it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love this cow. So if you are interested in color work at all, and if it intimidates you, get this. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, yeah. 
I, I floated it. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut that and um, weave that in. But or, at first, I was going to try to do floats. And I was like, that's going to get caught on my face and stuff. So I did start carrying it under. But there are a few floats. But that's okay. This is for me, so it doesn't matter. But if you're interested in color work, like learning the technique better or anything like that, this is an awesome pattern to get for it. I would suggest this big time. The This part here was super easy even. It looks kind of complicated. Every stitch is a different color in the round. But um, it helps you learn how to use bobbins. I had just a ball of white and a ball of black, like a little ball, scrap ball, that I just carried along. So that was my bobbin. I didn't actually have to like wind a bobbin or anything. But um, it's easy. It's it's good technique for color work and um, I'm sure she put this out because of her cow that was going I think it's over now it ended the last day of February but she had a color work cow going on and um, then this color work cowl came out so it was just it was just perfect timing and I loved it I love this pattern I can't say enough good things about it there weren't I didn't find any errors like I didn't have a hard time doing anything the only thing that was a little bit um, difficult was this part was I kept getting my yarn twisted up but that's just how it is when you're changing color every few stitches uh, you just have to keep on twisting them or rotating the pattern <laughs> the project in between a few stitches so yeah anyways that's enough about that but I love that pattern it's an awesome pattern definitely go check it out if you're interested in color work or anything like that <laughs> I got interrupted again I keep getting phone calls or emails that I have to like uh, pay attention to right away <laughs> But okay, that is all of my finished objects this week. Okay, now whips. I got, let's see here. I got four active whips that I've actually worked on this week. One of them, two of them are new whips. Two of them are old whips. And I actually did frog one whip. Um, I mentioned that I was going to frog it, I think, in my last video. Or it might have been on the Facebook group. I can't remember exactly. But I was working on a Christmas ornament for a little bell. And I just wasn't feeling it. So I went ahead and frogged it and wound the ball up into, or the, this gain into a ball. Which I'll tell you why in a minute. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, we'll just hop in. I'll just grab this one because it's on the top. This is the, um, Cozy C Christmas Cushion by Love Crochet. And I'm the, I have the other panel in there that's done. I finished the whole front panel except the appliques for the decorations. And I was working on this one. I thought, I felt like I was working on it for hours. And it's taking forever to grow because it's just rows and rows and rows and rows of single crochet back and forth. So, it's grown a little bit since last time I showed it, <laughs> but it's just white, single crochet back and forth. I've got to do 43 rows, and this is like 20 something, I think. Let's see here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22. 22 on the nose, rows back and forth. So I've got to do, I'm about half done with the white, and then I got to put a red border around it, and then I got to do a little bit more than 43 rows. It's a little bit bigger than this one probably 50 something rolls of blue and then um, make my appliques for the front of the pillow and then sew it all together and get a pillow form to stick in it so that's taking forever to get done <laughs> but it will get done this is a fair project that I'm working on uh, our fair isn't until the end of August this year so I got plenty of time to finish this and other um, projects for it I've got a whole list of projects I want to make for the fair I started this pillow because I thought it would be easy and I wanted to do something easy for the first one just to kind of get the ball rolling and then this one's ended up taking forever so I should have started with like a stocking or something um, and I got my Christmas stocking picked out for the fair this year so but yeah so that's that that's a free pattern it'll be linked below all right my next whip I was working on it before I started filming it's laying right here and it's the Jada and Stitches uh, 2019 calendar blanket i am almost done with it i think i'm on the 10th row that's the wrong end that's gotta be the wrong end i wasn't that far yeah one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah the 10th row i'm almost done with the 10th row nope i started the 11th row right there um of the light blue so i'm almost done i'm at the very end of the actual blanket so <clears throat> Here it is. This is all Red Heart Super Saver because I have a ton of it on stash. This is just Red Heart Super Saver Blue. And then this is Coffee. And this is, I can't remember if this is called Dark Green or Evergreen or something like that. It's 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 not Patty Green because <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> but it, it's something. <laughs> this is Spring Green and then this is Light Blue. 
So I'm on the, the 11th row, row, I just started it of, I think, 20. And then I can fashion, I can't talk. I can finish it off and weave in all the little random ends that's hanging around. And then the blanket will be done other than all the appliques throughout the year and I'm assuming a border. So I'm hoping the border is gonna look like a frame. I'm thinking it's going to, like gonna be brown or something. Um, because the way she's talking about it, you know, like it's a work of art and you know, she keeps hinting toward it being like a landscape and you know, obviously it's going to be something landscapey because it's got what I would imagine to be water, ground slash trunks of trees slash the greenness of trees or hills with other hills with the blue. <laughs> so it's going to be like a landscape. But I'm hoping that it's going to have like a frame around it. And if she does a different border, I might just do a frame, a border that makes it look like a wooden frame or something to make it look like it's a framed piece of art. But I'm thinking that's what she's going to do. Anyways, mine's almost done. That's what I'm trying to say. It's actually a really good size blanket. I was a little worried at first that it's going to be on the smaller side. But it's turning out like a really good lap blanket. Like I can, I'm already like covered up with it when I'm working on it. So I think it'll be fine to like have hanging out in the um, living room after. So, but I'm, I'm going to try to finish that up today. So here after I film and edit, I will probably um, try to finish that up so that I could start on that next square blanket for the unraveled mitten cow. Cause I want to get both of those done and out of the way so that I can work on my other random whips and then start some new projects because I got some new yarn that I'm going to share with y'all in a minute and um, fair stuff. I got more fair projects so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Alright, my last whip, I think it's my last whip. Nope, my second to last whip. That goes to that one. Is Rosie Wrap from Randy <laughs> um, from Anne Seeger Creations and uh, oh gosh, I always mess up her channel name. Everybody does. Randy's Random Ramblings, I think it is. I don't know. Y'all know who she is. <laughs> but I started her, one of her rosy wraps. I've been wanting to make a rosy wrap of hers for forever. But um, she had it as a video tutorial. And I, I, like, I like video tutorials. But I prefer written tutorials so that I can watch videos while doing the pattern. And then she updated her website and added the written uh, tutorial out. So I did start it today. This is not that bright. This is cherry red. So it's darker red. But I've, you know, this is one of the... The ties that will be up here <laughs> and this is part of the actual ear part or ear warmer part so I've just got to keep going straight until it's the size of my head and then make another one of these at the other end so that I could tie it so I just started that a little while ago um, I, I started this for two reasons one is I've always wanted one and I'm actually gonna make another one after this because I want to use a variegated yarn or a strapping yarn or something but I wanted a red one too <laughs> but um, one I've always wanted it and two uh, Llama Mama Kayla has her new March bingo started and one of her um, one of the squares is to make a pattern inspired by or whatever a um, podcaster so and I already knew that I wanted to make one of these so I was like well this is perfect timing to finally make one because one I will get the thing that I want and two I can get another space on the bingo board so bonus double double whatever I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> two things for one thing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But yeah. So I am going to finish this red one. And then I want to make some sort of variegated one or something. I don't know. I haven't p figured it out yet. But I'll pick it out of my stash. I got all kinds of variegated yarn in there. Um, maybe Painted Canyon or something. Because I love that. Oh, I will see you later. But yeah. So that's from Randy. It's a free pattern. She does have a video tutorial of it. And a written version of it on her website which will be linked below the written the written one will be linked below and the video one you can just go to her channel and uh check that out that way okay my last whip is actually a knit crate um pattern slash yarn it's both it was the last one that i got which was i think february's yeah february's knit crate let me get it off over here oh goodness this one is one I was originally going to take on vacation with me to work on. And then when I started um, Nicole's Cow, I really was enjoying it. So I wanted to take it. But then I ended up not doing anything. So this one did stay home. I have worked on it just a smidge, 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 smidge. A little tiny bit. <laughs> and it is the crochet pattern from the last Knit Crate, February's. And it's called the Bella Askew by Jen Hayes Creations. 
that down right there. <laughs> I loved it when I seen it. When I first seen it, it reminded me of the Treasure Island shawl from Hannah at the Cozy Cottage Crochet. So I started it, and it's super simple so far. And I'm using the Knit Crate yarn from last month. Oh, goodness. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. It's the green one. I got the green one. Pull my stitches up so I don't... This is all I've done so far. <laughs> I like it because it's got, well, it's backwards. It's got puff stitches and then the eyelet holes. And then, you know, it'll be more throughout the rest of the pattern. So I, I thought that was really neat. I love this color and it's actually pretty soft. It's got my taco on it. It was made from um, Llama Mama, Kayla's shop. I'm not sure if she made it or her son. Because some that she makes and some her son makes. But it was gifted to me by someone else. Uh, but I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> That's just on there to show me which way's the front. So I can make sure that my puff stitches are pointing the right direction throughout the pattern. So um, he's not. That's all he's marking. He's just hanging out there being cool. But yeah, I'm loving this so far. I can't wait to finish it because it's real pretty. I probably won't get to wear it this winter because I, it takes me forever to do uh, shawls. Because I don't know. I just I don't particularly enjoy making shawls, but I do like wearing them every now and then. So I have to like make them. But um, so this is gonna take me forever. I'll be able to wear it next winter for sure. Maybe I better not say that. I might not. But I'm loving this yarn. This is an alpaca blend. I'm pretty sure. I think it was wool alpaca and nylon or something like that. And I like it so hard. It hasn't irritated me yet. I'm hoping that it doesn't. I've never really worked with alpaca. So I guess we'll see. When I sit down to actually work on this for longer than a few minutes. Uh, we'll see if it irritates me. If it was to irritate me. I would probably just give this to somebody. That I know that is yarn worthy. Nice yarn worthy. Or um, try to find somewhere to donate it to. But I wouldn't want to donate it. To many ch charities because of the fiber it's made out of you know you never know who's going to get it and they could be horribly allergic to wool or alpaca or anything like that yeah i think it's going to be really pretty i like it a lot i'm pretty excited about the next knit crate uh yarn color i got the email that is for um influencers uh like a preview and i'm really liking the color that is going to be in next month this is the preview for it but the color that is the the regular knit crate i mean there's gray in it but there's also blue in it and yellow i guess i took that from that little bird right there on the top it's got blue and yellow i don't know <laughs> but it's real pretty it actually kind of reminded me of our hockey team a little bit like a, a duller version of their colors but yeah so i got the pattern in there and i've also got this notepad oh you can't see it's blown out but it's got all the rolls so that i can mark them off while I'm working on them because you basically do the same thing over and over and over for so many rows and I, I just like to do that so that I can keep track of what row I'm on if I don't write something down it doesn't get done always 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 all right that is all my whips pretty sure so now I guess we can move into acquisitions I'm going to show you these books first because I actually got these before the last episode and I, I had them laying on the table but I forgot to even mention them when I was filming but these are books that I just picked up at the thrift store. <clears throat> Our thrift store is weird. <laughs> they sell books by the pound. And they sell them. They're 39 cents a pound. So you can pick out any books you want. And they weigh them on a scale. And that's how they, they price them. But I just found these kind of tucked away. These weren't in the book section. They were over by the um, the craft stuff. like they, Where they put sewing notions and stuff. Which I always go there first. And dig around for yarn and stuff. But, um, so this is one of them. This is a, is this a Leisure Arts? Yeah, this is a Leisure Arts book. And it is just an Afghan book. Here's the ones that's in it. They're Ripple Afghans. I really like this one right here. I think I might make that eventually. Probably not anytime soon, but eventually. And this one is a book of crochet stitches. This is just, um, different stitches. And actually this one right here, I don't know if you can see it very well. This one's been real popular lately. I've seen a lot of patterns popping up with this stitch right here in it. This has got 19 stitches in it. And I thought if I ever wanted to design my own thing, I could, you know, this would be handy. And then this one is, is this another leisure arts? I don't know. Easy to crochet, 63 pattern stitches. So this is another book of stitches. And they're squares. They're all done in squares. There's some of them. 
thought this would be neat to just make a blanket with. I think that's what they did because on the front there's like a blanket <laughs> and also on the back of all the different um, stitches. So I thought that was neat. But yeah, so I just picked those up one day and this isn't even a pound. It was it was under 30 cents <laughs> when I bought it. So it's always good. Alright, so now other acquisitions. <laughs> I just stopped real fast to message Devin. He got to work. Alright, I'll just show these ones first because they're just basic Red Heart. I got some jumbo skeins of Red Heart Super Saver for my fair blanket that I'll be making. Um, I'll pop up a picture real quick of what it's going to look like. But in the picture, it's got like a cream color background with the little Sue's, what are they called? Somebody, Sue's on it. And it's bordered in a green color. I'm going to use Red Heart Super Saver Erin. Yeah. <laughs> For the background colors, it's really blown out, but it's like a off-white color. I got two of those. That should be enough yardage for it. And then the border, instead of being that green color, I'm going to use, I think it's Cafe Latte. Yeah. Cafe Latte. Because I, I wanted to keep it more neutral so that the colors of the girls' dresses would stand out better. And I'm just going to make all their dresses and their hats. Uh, the hats are all going to be the same color, but the dresses are going to be different colors. And I'm going to use stash yarn. And then her skin color, um, I'll probably have to get some more skin color. And I'll probably get some red hearts, uh, like buff or something. Because I'll, my favorite Caucasian skin color is, um, I love this yarn, Light Peach, I think it's called. But it's noticeably thinner than um, Red Heart. It's, it's a little bit thinner than Red Heart. And usually if you mix them together, you can kind of tell. I don't know, I might try to make one square with it and see how that looks. And um, go from there. But yeah, so those are just the ones I got for that particular project I needed. The rest of it is all scrap yarn. Or not scrap yarn. Stash yarn. Uh, except for the skin color. I'll have to probably buy more of either one of those colors that I choose. I'll probably have to get more. But yeah, so on our trip. <clears throat> I think I got it off. Yeah. On our trip, um, I didn't want to buy a ton of yarn or anything. And... Uh, actually, I did go to one Joann's on the trip, but it was a really horrible Joann's. It was the tiniest Joann's I've ever been in. They only had like one aisle of yarn, and all the stuff that I would have been interested in buying was gone. I don't know if they had just had a really good yarn sale or what, but it was all sold out. And the only yarn they had on like a big sale that day that I was there was that new um, Bulky Loops or whatever it's called. And although I am interested to try that, I didn't want to buy any that day. So I did go to two yarn stores while we were on vacation. One while we were actually on vacation and one when we were on our way back. Um, the first one was the, the what's it called? Smoky Mountain Spinnery, which is in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, which is telling you where we went. <laughs> we went to Gatlinburg in Pigeon Forge for our trip. Um, we've been there plenty of times because we live really close to it. But um, there's so much stuff to do there that it's always fun to go back and back and back and back. <laughs> But, um, so I got two hanks of yarn at that store, Smoky Mountain Spinnery, <laughs> and then I, I stopped at another yarn store, um, actually way close to us, it's one town over from us, and, um, it's called the Yarn Patch, and I went there and got two, uh, hanks, and these were all, um, what's it called, impulse buys, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to make with these, I, I kind of have a slight ideas of what I want to make with them, and, um, I think three of them are DK weights and one is finger weight but um, I want to learn how to knit a little bit better because I want to make socks and I want to make knitted hats so I might save the finger weight for that or I may use it to make a crochet hat or something I don't know I haven't figured it out I bought it because it's pretty <laughs> so this is the first one I bought it's from the knitted wit and it's a sock yarn and it's um, they have a line of colors that are named after uh what are they called national parks like the nationwide the big famous ones and although this great the smoky mountain one was beautiful it had like purples in it i i was drawn to this one because this is my color scheme my color my favorite my two most favorite colors in the world are greens and blues mixed together like together and this one when as soon as i saw it, it made me instantly think of like earth which is another big thing to me and to my spirituality and all that so um uh, I knew when I saw this that I wanted it, and I wish I had bought two hanks of it, but to be honest, it was very expensive. For someone like me who's used to using acrylic yarn, this is crazy expensive, <laughs> but I did buy it anyways. And it's really sunny outside, so it's maybe blown out a little bit, but when I saw it, it just made me think of Earth, 
which is awesome. It's one of my most favorite things to ever like talk about is nature and earth. So I think it's just so pretty. And there is a darker blue like right here, but it was it was pretty expensive. It was like it was I don't even want to say how much it was, <laughs> but it is 420 yards and it's four ounces. It's 80% uh, super rush merino and 20% nylon. It's beautiful and squishy. <laughs> And I can't wait to make something with it. But with that being said, it'll probably live like this for a while until I, I know what I want to make with it. Because this isn't yarn I want to like practice knitting with. I'll get some other cheaper fingering weight to practice with socks and stuff eventually. And that's probably not going to be anytime soon. <laughs> it's just goals, I guess. But yeah, I wish it wasn't so bright. I wish you could see it better. But it is so sunny outside today. It's just beautiful. I will take... I took pictures actually. I'll try to take a better picture and I'll put it on my Instagram if you're interested in the colors. I'll do it in the windowsill or something so that the colors are a little bit easier to see. But that one was from the Smoky Mountain Spinnery. And then this one. <laughs> I love this. I wish there had been more than one of these. I would have bought, I would like to have had two or three of these, but they only had one in this colorway. And it is, what is it? It's labels a little hard to read because it's got a lot going on on it. Uh, oh, goodness. Let's see here. Well Dressed Sheep is the company, I think. Great something, I can't say, yarn company. <laughs> well Dressed Sheep is what it says. <clears throat> the color is confetti, and this is 100% organic cotton. It's a DK weight, and there's 315 yards. But it's the swab. This is a rainbow, <laughs> as if you couldn't tell. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this. The moment this is another one that as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm buying that. That's going home with me. <laughs> and uh, there is green in there. You just can't see it. Let me. There you go. It's on there. <laughs> I love this. I have no idea what I'm gonna make with it. It is DK weight, so there's a little bit more that I can make crochet wise with this than this. Because mostly with crocheting, I mean, you could technically make anything with any hook or yarn it just would be small or large depending on what you use but typically for like finger weight in crochet you either make socks or shawls and things dainty like that or garments that take you your whole life to make but decay weight is a little bit more versatile you can make pretty much anything with it <laughs> amigurumis hats scarves fingerless gloves shawls socks even I just love this. It's just pretty the way it is. It doesn't even have to be made into anything. It's just pretty. <laughs> I can't wait to wind this into a cake and uh, see how it looks. All right. And then the other two that I got <clears throat> at the, the yarn shop that's closer to home, these these are just um, the same ones, the same colors. And they're kind of rainbow color, but they're kind of muddy rainbow colors. And the one I really wanted, they only had one of. And uh, I, I like buying insets. <laughs> so I did buy two of these. It's a Malabrigo, which this is the first Malabrigo I've ever had. I don't even know why people love Malabrigo yet. I haven't worked with it, so I don't know. And it is, what is it? It's also a DK weight. It's 335 yards. It's pure super rush merino wool. Uh, the colorway is <laughs> Anniversario. Anniversario. Right here. I don't know how to say that. And then it's also, this is like the base, I think. Oh, I can't see it. I don't know how to say it. I can't speak it. But this is them. <laughs> They're kind of muddy rainbow colors. I have no idea what this is going to be either, but I just bought it because I was there and it was there and I wanted it. I had the extra money budgeted for their vacation trip, so why not? <laughs> but yeah, so I will eventually use all of these for something. And they all are together. I absolutely love this one. I'd love to have like four or five of these just to make all kinds of stuff with. <laughs> this is so pretty. And I'm thinking if I like this, I might order some more. But man, it's expensive. I wish it was a little bit cheaper. <laughs> I mean, I know that it's worth what it is priced at, but it's hard when you're used to being like an acrylic um, crocheter, you know, the cheap stuff. It's like three and four dollars a ball. And then you go on to try to start making fancier, nicer things for yourself or whatever. You want the fancier yarn and it's five or six times that. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy. But it is beautiful. I'd love to be able to dye my own yarn like this. It'd be so cool. But yeah, so that's my yarn from the vacation trip. 
I would have had a lot more had that Joann's been a little bit nicer and more full of yarn. Let's see here. My last acquisition actually came a little while ago and I had it uh, set up playing with it. <laughs> but it is... Da -da -da. Ah, it's hard to hold. It's yarn Swift. <laughs> These are the uh, the dowels that hold the yarn and the little um, Allen wrenches to loosen the bolt up. It's folded up now for storage. But if when I want to use it, and I'll probably make a video just to show you guys, and I'll re real review this after I use it a few times, because uh, I only used it once, so I can't really judge it yet. But um, I gotta take this this bolt thingy. I don't know what that's called. Cause it's not quite a nut. It's different. It's like a screw with a nut on top of it. I don't know what that's called. Bolt. <laughs> but um, and you take these off, and then you move them a certain way. I'll show you all in that other video. And then it makes just a swift. So it is. It spins obviously. And this is from. <clears throat> I ordered this off of Etsy. It was $30, $35 and some change plus shipping. I can't I think it came to like $42 altogether. And it's from the Fiber Artist Supply Company, which is fiberartistsupply.com. But that's not who I ordered it from. I ordered it from the Etsy shop. And I'll link it below if I can remember. I think it was called the Knitting Store or the Knit Store. I can't exactly remember. But I will uh, link it below for sure if you want to, uh, if you're interested in checking it out. But like I said, after I use it a few times, I will make a video reviewing it. Um, this is my first Swift ever, so I don't have a lot to compare it to. <laughs> but as like a beginner Swift, I think this would be good already just because it's really simple to use. It's not as intimidating looking as those umbrella ones that have all the foldy bits. Um, and so far this, this doesn't take up a lot of space. But I will say that it, it is kind of hard to store. I think I'm going to have to hang up some hooks strategically on the wall to hang it from just to keep Jesse from messing with it because he's already been trying to play with it and I don't want him to break it obviously because I just bought it. And I don't know if they have a uh, warranty or not. I guess I need to check that out. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty cool. I have used it once and I did bring it over here. This was a yarn that was gifted to me last year I think or early I think it was the summer of 2017. It was right after, a little bit after I started making videos, I think. I can't remember. But this is a really pretty, it's a DK weight. It's like blue mixed with grayish tones and brownie tones. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. But it is, I messed up the bottom. I didn't have my tension tight enough, but it's a learning curve. Um, I've been saving this forever because I want to, I know that I want to make amigurumi with it. But I don't know what yet. So I'm trying to find the perfect pattern for it. That's why I went ahead and kicked this up. Because this was a hank. And I wanted to use that. But I didn't want to use it on these yarns. Because I'm not going to use them anytime soon. They're just going to go in my stash. So I didn't want to just practice. You know of course it's a new toy. I wanted to play with it. But um, it worked good. I have a ball winder that I got off of Amazon. Many moons ago. I don't even know how long ago. I've had it for a while. And it's pretty decent little ball winder. I wish that it was bigger. I wish it could make bigger cakes. But um, I guess I could invest in something like that later. But yeah, this was gifted to me. I don't know if this company still exists or not. But it is Amelia and Wiggles. And it's AmeliaandWiggles.com. This colorway is called Blueberry. And it is a size 3. Super Wash uh, Merino. 240 yards. AmeliaandWiggles.com. But yeah, so I'm going to save this and try to make something with it soon. Because I've been wanting to use it ever since it was gifted to me. Because I think it would be such a pretty water-themed amigurumi. Like a, a whale, maybe. Or... I don't even know. A, I, don't, I don't think it's a fish. <laughs> I think maybe a whale or something like a whale. Not necessarily actual fish, though. Because... It's so much not, it's not that bright. <laughs> it's showing so bright because of the lighting. It's a little bit darker colors than it's showing on the camera right now. It's just pretty. And I want to make something with it. I've been holding on to it for forever and waiting for the perfect pattern. And I'm hoping that I can find it soon. And I'm still looking. I'm still looking. All right. Now, I think that is everything that I wanted to show you to do with whips and finished objects and acquisitions. <laughs> I think so. Um. I do have some bags here I wanted to show you guys, and I am going to be making more project bag sets. I'm going to be making drawstring project bag sets with the regular zipper notion pouches, and I'm going to have a few larger size <clears throat> zipper bags, like project zipper bags, and I think all of them will have notion pouches with them. I'm not sure yet. I have to actually make them and see about my material and stuff, but I, I got to start that today, actually. I got them all cut ready yesterday. Well, 
some last week and the rest I finished cutting yesterday. So I got to start sewing today so I can have all week to sew them all up and get them all nice and pretty and pictures taken for the update. I'm going to try to make the update for the Etsy shop to be Friday, which I think is the 8th. Um, if not Friday the 8th, it'll for sure be Saturday the 9th. Um, the shop will be updated. But then these will also be in there. These are some of the flex frame bags that I showed. I showed one <laughs> last video or two ago and I had some on my Facebook group that I showed y'all. But I made all of these ones, most of these ones yesterday, all but one. This is one of the ones that I showed on the Facebook group. This is the larger size. This will hold crochet hooks and it's, there's a metal hardware in there. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's like a flexible metal. So you just pinch it and it, um, it opens. People make sunglass cases out of these. I've had a few people say that they would be interested in ordering these for sunglass cases. And they are big enough <laughs> if you're interested in that. But uh, I made them intending them to be hook cases. But you can use them for whatever you can fit in there. That one's got a yellow inside. And then this is another long one. This is the llama print that was huge. Everybody loved. I think it's white. Yeah, white on the inside. And then I just got some little ones. This is uh, Valentine's Hearts. Uh, this is more planets like the one I made myself, but it's different parts of the material, so the planets are different. And mermaids. I had some scrapped. Ooh, Lord of mercy. Some scrap mermaid material. This is all scrap material. I was trying to find ways to use up my scraps and, uh, you know, not just throw them away or donate them. And then dogs. It's white on the inside. I think all of these are white on the inside. Nope, that one's red. <laughs> Uh, this one I think is green. It's like a dark green. And the mermaids. What color are you? Ugh, pink. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. And the llamas is white. <laughs> but um, these are the ones that I got made for the shop. I actually made some other ones, but they were for a specific person. I've got to make my mom one, and then I've got some more cut out. I don't know if they'll be in this next shop update. These ones for sure will be in the next shop update. They will be sold separately, and they'll be $6 each. Um... They're even the big ones and the little ones are both six dollars each just because I didn't want to add like 50 more cents to this one just because of slightly more material. But um, the reason these are only six dollars each is because I got a really good deal on the flex frames this time. But the company that the Etsy shop that I bought them from don't have any more. I bought the last one that they had last set. So if I do make more of these bags in the future, the price might be slightly different depending on how much it costs me to get the metal fixtures. Because these ones are actually super cheap. I bought 20 of them for, with the shipping, it was $15.50. So they were $0.77 cents each. Uh, all the other listings I've found since then, they're all a dollar plus each. So it'll only change the price just barely slightly. Um, unless for some reason the price of those fixtures go up. And I'm trying to look into more bag shapes. <laughs> um, there was one bag that I was really excited about making and I talked about it months ago. But I can't get the pattern to come out the way I want it to. So um, that, it's been shelved. But So now I'm going to have the drawstring bags, the normal size notion pouches, these randomly <laughs> whenever I can get the fixtures. And I'm going to start making some zipper project bags because I had people um, mention them. You know, some people prefer drawstring, some people prefer a zipper. So I'm going to try to put a few out each time from now on. And uh, there are some other bag shapes that I'm looking into and different notion pouch type things. Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to, you know, get more variety in case some people don't just like the regular old uh, notion pouch slash drawstring pouches I've been putting out. But yeah, so these are neat. I really like these. I've been using one of these little ones. Uh, it's the space one, actually. Not this one, but one like it. And I love it. It's handy. I keep my stitch markers and my little scissors uh, that I clip ends with and all that in there. And then I keep it inside my bigger zipper pouch, Notions pouch, that has my hooks in it. So that way, I think these ones right here would be handy if you were ooh, if you were either going somewhere where you didn't need a, all your hooks with you, just a few, like if you're going on a trip or something, you could throw your hooks down in here, your scissors and some stitch markers, all that kind of stuff down in this to take with you. Or you can even put this with just the hook for your project, a stitch marker or two, um, measuring tape, you know, whatever little notions you need for a specific project. And then you could just put this down in the project bag with the project. That way, um, you know, you have somewhere that's secure and, you know, 
nothing will really fall out of that unless you're like aggressively shaking it or something or maybe if it got stuck on something but um so i think you your stuff would be fairly safe just down in there um so you wouldn't have to worry about losing like your hook unless you had like a little tiny hook if you're making some sort of lace weight thing your little tiny steel hook might come out of there because i don't know if you can see it there's like a tiny tiny gap but it's mostly closed it's a little hard to do that. I mean, it's not hard, but it's it's not super easy. It's not like if you bump into a wall while you're carrying your project with you, it's not going to open up and spill out. But yeah, it's neat. Me and Devin call these crab bags because I didn't know when I first bought these or was looking to buy these, I didn't know what these things were called. So I told him, I was like, you know those bags that you like, you do this to open them? And, he's, and ever since then, he's been like, you're doing your crab hands again. So now I call them the crab bags. So if you guys ever hear me refer to crap bags, these are what I'm talking about for future reference. <laughs> All right. I think that's everything. I can't think of anything else that I may have forgotten. Oh, I did want to mention uh, Llama Mama's March bingo. It started, obviously, because it's March. Today, as I'm filming this, it's March 4th. I've already got, I think, I've got two stamps. Well, the free one <laughs> that everybody gets. And then I did do another one. Oh, the working on a blanket one. I feel like I did another one, too. I don't know but um this one will be one when it gets done and i'll have a few other ones uh she has one on there that is to wind all your floppy skeins into balls i've done that with two of them but i've got a few more that i'm going to go ahead and wind up too and then i'm going to take a picture of that and then enter it but i'm going to wait till i get more i didn't want to just do it with one because that, that seemed kind of cheaty to me but um i love the the bingo idea that she's doing and another person who does that is uh kendra from Hooked by having sex. <laughs> uh, she does a bingo also. But um, it's fun because you get the satisfaction of getting the bingos. It's like a, a goal. And I'm a goal-oriented I'm a goal -oriented person. So I always try to you know achieve things. So it's good to have little goals out there to make me finish projects and stuff. And it's also fun to try to win something, of course. But um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And she always says not to let the bingo board dictate your projects. But it kind of helps me with ideas of starting new projects. Like if I, I want to start something, but I'm not sure what I want to start, I can look at my bingo board and be like, oh, well, there's a square for making something with green yarn so I can go make a green hat or whatever. And um, so that does kind of help me choose patterns that I might not have chose originally or if I'm having a hard time thinking of anything to make, uh, I can look at the bingo board and it will give me kind of ideas of um, what to make. <laughs> but um what is it it's march so i've got a few my let's see here it's march 4th so march april may june july august i have about almost like right under six months because our fair starts the very end of august um so i've got till the saturday before that date to do projects so i got a whole list of projects that i want to do for the fair so a lot of those projects will be seen soon and a lot of them will be bingo projects probably and cow projects you know I always try to double dip when I'm allowed because it helps you um, be able to enter more cows and uh, potentially win giveaways <laughs> and uh, it's motivating to me cows and stuff cows to me are the same way the bingo board is it's kind of motivating it it makes me want to finish more items to either enter into a cow or to mark off on the bingo board because it makes me feel good that I'm finishing stuff and it also helps me get my my self into gear to actually finish things instead of having them laying around for forever but um one of my goals this year when i talked about my goals earlier in the year was to not do projects that i don't enjoy so that's one reason i ripped out the bell um because i did start that because one i want to make christmas ornaments this year but two um the becky over at the funny farm uh podcast funny farm crochet she has a year-long cow going on of uh, christmas ornaments so I thought that I would, you know, enter Christmas ornaments into that, plus make Christmas ornaments, but I wasn't enjoying that one. Um, so I ripped it out and put the yarn back up, and I can use it for something else later. And I have plenty of time to make other Christmas ornaments if I want to. I actually do need to make one for the fair, but it'll be a thread one because I've learned from going to my county fair forever that those are the ones that always win, the thread ones. Um, the more dainty ones and not the cute, you know, Santa faces and stuff. But anyways, that's the side note. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and hop off here because I need to get this video edited and up. And I need to put all this stuff up that I got out. <laughs> and I don't know what else I want to do today. I need to get to sewing, but I'll probably save that till later. Um, so I can bring the sewing machine in here and watch TV and sew 
for forever because the shop update is going to be pretty big this time. I've got, I'll have six of these little bags. I'll have 19 drawstring bags. No, no, no. 15 drawstring bags with notion pouches and four or five. Camera. Four or five big project bags, zipper bags with notion pouches. So all together I'm making let's see here, I have I'm trying to remember. 19, 21, 2, 3, 4. I've made 36. I will be making 36 bags this week. <laughs> I've already made some of them though. Because I made these six and then I made the other six that was for a private order of these bags and I gotta actually I gotta make one more too because my mom uh wants one for her sunglasses so uh, I've got her material picked out already I wish I had more of this material because a lot of people was interested in it I think I have some more of the black but I don't have any more of the red I'd have to buy some more and I made it yellow I can't remember if I told y'all that but I thought it popped good but yeah I got a lot of sewing to do <laughs> and I need to do it I already um I gotta iron all the interfacing onto the ones that are interfaced and then start sewing that's all i gotta do i already got everything else cut out all the actual material cut out and yeah but that's still a lot of work i do gotta go to the store and buy some more mailers and some more thank you cards because <laughs> i'm running out of thank you cards i think i've only got one left i used to send out stitch markers with all my bag orders and i want to start doing that again it's just i haven't had time sitting on make stitch markers i got all the stuff in there i actually bought some of the leverback things recently to make more stitch markers with I just haven't got around to doing it so if you order a bag this weekend you might get a stitch marker I'm not sure <laughs> it all depends on if I can get around between now and when orders come um if I make them but if you do order if I put them up on Friday and you order Friday Saturday or Sunday uh or even Monday does the all the orders will probably ship Monday or Tuesday that I get this weekend and I usually do try to ship the next day after the first weekend <laughs> Because when I order stuff online, I hate waiting forever uh, to get it. So I always do try to ship my orders out the next day. Some days I get to ship them the day I get them. Like if um, I get them early in the morning, I will ship them before Devin goes to work. So I just try to ship fast. Because <laughs> I know if anyone's like me, it sucks waiting for something when you ordered it. So yeah. But with all that being said, I'm going to leave now because I got to get some stuff done. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.